Just to give you a little overview, this is what is planned, as I just said, the quintessence of a topic. Um, okay, this is the structure that I had in mind for this new format, um, applicable, really applicable. It's not about giving you the historical depth and all the connections and what happened with what king and why and where, uh, only if you really need it for using art and architecture from the discipline um, of art history for your projects. Um, that's why it's more about the looks and the feels of something and how you can use it for your projects. That is the basic idea. We will see how it goes um, and uh, develop this step by step. That's why I'm always happy for your feedback. Please give me feedback, um, what you like, what you missed, what you want more. Um, and so I can develop this format for you as the game creators and artists who need reference materials or want reference materials, um, new uh, inspiration, new insights, new perspectives on all of this. Um, as I said, uh, later we do an open Q&A as long as needed and go through your questions. So please put them in the, in the uh, chat. And in the end, I want to try this art meditation with a total different piece of art also to break a bit um, what we just uh, what we will see today and experience today and then um, check how how this works for us I, I I don't know 10 minutes was the plan uh, we even have nice chilly ambient background music for that and I have never done that with people so <laughs> we just testing um Yes, yeah, so much about this. If you have any questions <laughs> about the concept, I, I'm happy to answer them yet uh, now. And if not, um, I started, I wanted to have a structure for this um, quintessence topic part. And I thought, because that's how I learned it uh, as an art historian, we start with the basics, of course, a tiny little bit of historical numbers and backgrounds and everything, but not much because it's not so important. It's more for giving you a grid of, of dates and times so we know where we are more or less. And it doesn't matter if a building that we were looking at today is plus minus 20 years or something. It's more about getting the feeling of Romanesque um, art and architecture today and capture that feeling for your project, what you can do with that, how it works, what uh, the specialty of this um, early Middle Ages type, Middle Age type, Ages type, oh God, um, is and so on. Um, and after the basics, we start, of course, with a look and the feel. This is the main part. And then the application is the last part. I want to show you some um, game examples, but also film and TV shows where Romanesque architecture, mostly architecture, is used and um, how they implemented it into their game creation and their visual world building and narrative and uh, talk with you about that. So that is the basic plan for today. And as you see, I am very excited and very excited to do that in English. I have my dictionary, my web dictionary open because sometimes a lot of words I don't know because I learned classical art history in German, in Germany. Um, and the word Tonnengewölbe, I just Googled it, I uh, had to look it up because I had no idea what it is in English because we never learned that. It's a barrel wall, by the way, um, something that we will see today. Um, so I guess let's start today with the Romanesque um, epoch. And what is an epoch, by the way? Um, give me a sec. Where is my little controller? There's my little controller. <laughs> Um, the basics. The epochs are terms of art history. Art history is a very old discipline um, that is trying to structure everything that is coming to us uh, from the old times, the, the past, um, in forms of objects, of aesthetical objects, of architecture, of design, and so on. Later, um, photography was added, more or less. Um, but mostly it is paintings, architecture, monuments, statues, stuff like that. The really old stuff that is building our world. This is uh, one of the most important parts for visual world building, not only in games or films, but also in this world, because these are the remain things that remain from the past, 
mostly that we know of besides some um, written documents and books and stuff like that, but not so many. And this is how we see and feel history and create with it atmospheres and um, giving a certain feeling and context. That's why I think it's very helpful maybe for game projects to see more of this, more variations, more uh, content um, that can be added and used as a structure, as an inspiration, as a reference material for projects um, and so on. Yeah, uh, here a little overview that I started um, I, I started my studies with that we learned in the first session for the introduction to art history. Uh, it's sadly in German, but I guess most of the stuff is, is um, very easy to translate because Renaissance is Renaissance. And this is the, easy, the, 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 the short overview of the art historical epochs that we use to structure all of the different centuries and times um, of the, the last more or less two millennia. Art history is normally covering Europe, uh, the classical at least, and everything at, from the end of the antiquity till today um, is what we are talking about. And you see, this is highly complicated, but it gives you an overview. It's just so you know um, what I'm talking about when talking about epochs. Uh, give me a sec. I have a little notepad where I put notes in, which are very helpful to have notes. Um, we like notes. <laughs> so um, there's just uh, for, for, for reference the a bit more complicated version because an epoch is not an epoch. An epoch deep is, is uh, just uh, uh, something that helps you to... Uh, yeah, locate something in time and space. And um, here is the overview for the five most important European countries as uh, art the old art history saw it. Germany, Spain, Italy, France, England, um, and the reign dates of the kings and the epoch borders. And you see, it's not always the same, especially for the Romanesque time that starts around 19 950, more or less, um, and lasted till 1140 in France, around 1200 in Germany, and even 1300 in Italy. All of this is just rough numbers to give you a more or less feeling. And of course, it didn't stop and said like, hey, we are done with Romanesque, let's start with Gothic. Um, of course, there were um, floating um, uh, transformations and uh, different buildings adding this and that and sometimes something new, something more older stuff. Um, so it's not always easy to say, and this is the end and uh, we are building in a totally new way. Uh, so all the numbers are not that um, important. And of course, uh, every country, every region, sometimes every city has a own style and own um um, special approach on that, uh, but today I want to show you very different uh, examples and show you what is the red thread running through this, because there is a reason we put this together as the Romanesque um, epoch, uh, because certain elements you can find everywhere and uh, make a Romanesque building a Romanesque building. That's why we are looking at this, and we're mostly focusing on architecture this time and with the next epochs um, to have also a little red thread. And in the future, if we like this format and this is yay, uh, we will um, dive into uh, other art forms like um, statues, like paintings they didn't have in the medieval time, but you know what I mean, like, like um, uh, stuff like this, like murals, like... Um, uh, book, pa uh, book paintings. I don't know the English word, to be honest. Buchmalerei is the German one. And here's a nice example just to show you that, of course, <laughs> the Romanesque time is not only architecture, but this is, um, of course, the most stuff that came till, um, overcome till today. Because buildings made of stone last longer, which is a very clever thing to say. Um, and wooden buildings, of course, didn't last so long. They have the tendency to burn down, to rot, to fall over if a storm comes, or just being replaced because they're a bit cheaper to build than a cathedral made of stone. Um, the same with uh, statues made of wood, with paintings, with other things. Um, from this time, there is fewer numbers. 
uh, but of course they exist. I just wanted to show you uh, this, and I, this is the first word I ha have to Google. Give me a sec. Is it really? Ah, book illumination. Uh, <clears throat> that was the word. Uh, is a very, very, very famous one and such a beautiful one. Uh, it's the Gospel of Henry the Lion, a very important German duke uh, from uh, the east part of what is now Germany. The word is also confusing, but we're not getting into this. Um, and it was uh, created um, after he married uh, the Princess of England, uh, who brought in a lot of money. So something like this with full page page uh, illuminations was seen as something awesome. Um, we are getting into this in another stream about um, decorative arts um, and, and certain color elements. I just wanted to show you this. It's very special. It's very Romanesque of this time. We are here in around 1188. Um, but so the late parts of it, but it's so beautiful. And you see something that my professor always called horror vacui. They were feared of emptiness. So everything had to be um, decorated, illustrated, painted with colors, with little circles, with decorative elements. Um, it is also something that is a representation of the power of the Duke, we're not getting into political iconography today, but something you can also draw a lot of uh, inspiration from um, his life um, story, what he did and how he showed that. We can see that in the um, picture on the right. I have a big, bigger one where you can see him and his wife who is taller than him, um, getting crowned by God himself with the crowns and everything, uh, showing that he is on the same level as the king, for example. It's a nice story. Um, and uh, in another stream, we can talk about historical inspirations, maybe for your game projects. Um, besides um, illuminations, we also have there a few, not so many uh, monuments left that are made of metal. A special metal called bronze, which is so difficult to make. And since the uh, downfall of antiquity, the downfall of the Roman Empire, uh, it was for centuries lost to do something like this. This is made of one um, in one sitting. It's not made of um, different little pieces that are put together or something. It is uh, done in one sitting, and it's a gigantic lion, which is from the same a duke that I just showed you to represent his amazingness, his wealth, his uh, the technological improvement of his reign in his area. Um, uh, the medieval ages are, of course, not the dark, grumpy, stupid people times. It was a gigantic jump in uh, population and technological advancements in prosperation economically and so on. Of course, not all the time and not everywhere all the time, but uh, since the downfall of the Roman Empire, this was a very big boom uh, phase that was very um, helping stuff. And that we can also see in the architecture that we will get into in a second. Um, because I mentioned that uh, the time between the um, fall of the Roman Empire uh, in the 5th century and this, where we are now in the 10th uh, century, long live the TH, um, that we are not covering today because there are not so many rem uh, reminiscences. And uh, I think this is what is more useful because there are so many objects also left from this time now, from the Romanesque time that can help um, and, and um, build a good foundation for variations in uh, game settings, for example. Um, the other time we will cover in a special uh, episode of this experiment. <laughs> um, but to show you this, this amazing thing. And um, of course, bronze metal uh, is a very, very awesome material that you could use for creating stunning um, objects and very impressive uh, elements in a game. For example, here, a door made purely of metal done also in one thing. This is also one gigantic piece of metal that was done uh, one time, 
Um, it's a bit difficult at the moment to describe it uh, for me in, in English. But you can see the, the um, little figurines coming out of the door. This is all done within one sitting of doing these gigantic doors. They are high, like three meter fifty, I think. Um, and of course, the two portals are separated and the rest is um, was put into a church to impress the people. And it was a gigantic really gigantic project and has such an interesting feeling to have portals made of this weighing tons of um, tons tons of tons um, and, uh, being uh, such a such a um, um, eye candy I would say and uh, this is something that you can find quite often in the Middle Ages when bishops mostly showed how awesome they are and um, how improved they, their um, handymen are and their technology in this region. It shows not only their power and their wealth, but also like, hey, we can do that. We are awesome. We are way better than you because we can um, make doors out of metal and put it in our churches. You can't. Uh, a lot of these projects um, destroyed cities like I grew up uh, next to the city of Mainz and we will see it later and they had a metal door too and uh, the first one exploded um, it's a very dangerous thing to have these big pieces of metal melted and everything and sometimes they explode and then the city burns maybe down and then you're not so happy and then you have to build your cathedral new which we will see later also a nice story um so this is dangerous and this is very rare and it shows the technological progress. I just want to show you a bit um, of different stuff before we go into architecture to uh, give you a feeling of the time, of the, uh, the um, yeah, uh, how these people <laughs> were thinking and uh, doing art and sculptures and every, um, everything. For example, also one of the few, I think there are three left in the world, uh, Romanesque um, wooden ceilings that were painted. This one is from around 1130 in the St. Michael's Church in Hildesheim, which is here in the east part of uh, now Germany. And um, of course, it got a little bit of replacements and everything, but it uh, remained more or less the way it looked um, 900, 900 years ago. Damn, that's a long time. Um, and you can see this, this wooden um, tapestry-like, gigantic uh, ceiling telling you the, the genealogy of Jesus, his descendants, his parents, um, till he comes um, over, over the decade. And um, it's an amazing feeling to see it. I once was on a field trip and saw it live. And was it's, it's really amazing. Gives you totally different feeling of the room and um, interacting with this art when you're standing like this there and have to look at it in this gigantic um, from illumination coming um, uh, elements there with the figures and everything. It's really, really impressive. Um, so the Romanesque art is, of course, not realistic. The, uh, this is something that we can say for the whole Middle Ages, that it's not about realism or naturalism or something. It's more about sim symbolic um, storytelling and um, in bright colors, um, in gigantic formats, but also in smaller ones. It's more about um, yeah, giving a feeling of otherness, otherworldliness that you are transported here. Of course, it's a lot of religious stuff that's overcome till today because the churches were very, well, buying high quality art once. On the other hand, um, good in preserving them. So uh, this is, of course, um, it looks like it was all, everything was very religious and churchy and whatever. But um, this is just due to the fact that this is what remained till today. Um, so, as the, the other art forms like paintings, like wooden ceilings, wouldn't call it an own art form, then let's call it a mural, um, a ceiling painting, more or less. Uh, the, the metal works and everything are more smaller and have less impact, I think, if, for game projects. I want to focus a bit more on architecture today and um, especially with the Gothic that we're doing the next time, 
uh, that makes the most sense for me at the moment. But as I said, we will focus on other aspects for giving people a certain feeling of milagy, fantasy maybe, um, getting inspiration out of this. We will focus on the other things. Um, the Romanesque architecture is used in a lot of games and uh, films I have seen. I, the most of you know I'm a very big fantasy and science fiction fan. And of course, to create this fantasy, medieval -y feeling, um, Romanesque art is used a lot uh, with other um, medieval uh, elements too. But this is... Uh, very coming um, happening very often, and there are certain elements that evokes this medievally uh, feeling that we connect with it. And uh, I want to show you some of these elements and um, yeah motives that make Romanesque art Romanesque art and architecture, and not Gothic or something. And um, what it can evoke for atmosphere and the feeling of your uh, game settings. So here is uh, the exterior of St. Michael's in Hildesheim, the church I just talked about with the wooden ceiling. And uh, here you can see, of course, the change of the centuries, of the burned down, got destroyed in the, during wars. Um, but it remained more or less very Romanesque. Ignore the, the Gothic windows that are very prominent in the lower parts. But um, the Romanesque architecture has a key feature called additive. Um, it's an additive building principle. Because as you can see here perfectly, it is ba uh, built uh, from basic geometric shapes, like um, round tubes, cubes. Um, rectangles that are put together. It's a bit like playing Lego or other elements and putting these um, forms in next to each other. That's why it's called additive building principle because they're adding to each other. They are not like totally interwoven or something. Um, and of course, it's very massive. We are looking uh, today mostly at big known representative Buildings, so of course they have a certain uh, condes, I would say, um, because they are yeah representative for kings, for uh, emperors, for very powerful bishops like here. Um, so they're, they're a bit. It's a bit different than the, the uh, churches you can find on the countryside that we will look at too. I have found a nice example just to give you a um, feeling of the variation of this time. Not everything looked everywhere the same even though it is called the first European um, architectural style, because you can find it everywhere in certain amounts and certain variations with certain aspects to a region, which we are not getting into today. Because the 30 minutes, we will never make it, but this is something you can study for your whole life and you don't see everything. So um, we're focusing on some certain elements. Here another view of St. Hildesheim, uh, Hildesheim, St. Michael in Hildesheim, just um, to highlight this um, additive building principle a bit more. You can really see the different forms putting together. But there's also a bit um, independent, I would say, like the towers, the little towers in the middle with the cubic form, they're more like, hey, I'm here and I'm part of this, but I'm also like, yay, very, very independent. Um, so they're put together somehow. Uh, and what does that do? Uh, uh, different, wait. How does the interior look like? This is the interior with the wooden ceiling I just talked about. You can see it just got renovated um, before this photo photography was taken. The org is very new, of course but you get a feeling of the room. And as you have seen here, and we will see in a lot of other examples, um, I will highlight that uh, again when we see other ones, um, it's a very massive, me very bulky um, building style. From the outside, it looks like a little castle, to be honest, or a fortress. It's very, um, yeah, earthbound. That's what I always call it. And, um, yeah, very, very massive. I think that's the best word. I checked the word uh, because I wasn't sure in my preparation. Uh, weighty. I liked weighty from weight um, because the building has weight. You can feel the stone. You can feel the, the massive walls and everything. 
um, just by looking at it. Because also you see the very small windows. Uh, back in the days, um, they didn't have big windows, not just because they couldn't build it, but also because they didn't want to. Um, it's very difficult to say after 1000 years, like, ah, that's what they wanted or that's what they couldn't do or something. But you see the little round arced uh, windows, which is a very important motive uh, for, for Romanesque art, is something that was also chosen. And here, with the white walls and the bright sunlight coming from the outside, it looks very bright and, and light and stuff. But also what you can see, what is a very important element of Romanesque art, the gigantic walls without windows, without decoration, without anything um, that make the room look like a box. Not make meaning it mean, um, but, but um, very... Uh, also like like enclosed, uh, very cave-like and, and a bit homey sometimes. This is something we will see now um, with the other examples too. And of course, ignore the, the whiteness. Um, the medieval church would not be that white and uh, without any decorations, but um, see it more with colored walls, maybe with paintings. But something that is very important uh, and we can see here uh, well, is the reduced decorative style. You see the different colors of the stones, of the arcs, of the big arcs, like mm, yeah, white, it's not, but but beige, eggshell, whatever, and a uh, darker color, which I can't tell because I'm colorblind, but doesn't matter. And this is something that is used as decorative element for the main parts of a building back in the days, uh, for the pillars, for the arcs, uh, to highlight here are the parts that are carrying the weight of the ceiling and of the towers, for example. Um, this is also a very easy decorative element to highlight something, which I really like. Um, yeah. And uh, very, very important for Romanesque arch uh, architecture is the columns and the pillars in this rhythm that you can see here. Two columns, one pillar... And then the beautiful round arcs, which is the most known uh, motive of Romanesque arc architecture and art too, um, are coming from the antiquity with the round arcs and the columns, but in a more reduced and a more massive way than the, uh, the old Romans would have built it. And you see the big pillars are very, oh, they're there. The columns are here very cute. But what is new and what is typical Romanesque is for the columns having these um, block-like, wait, I checked um, uh, the word, capitals. It's very easy uh, because in German it's Kapitel. And uh, these cubic form block-like capitals are very typical Romanesque. Sometimes decorated, sometimes really pure form. And they are um, showing a search, uh, giving it a very, yeah, bulky feeling again. Um, just so you um, get that feeling. Uh, let's see something else, because I want you to um, get into this time and this building time and this epoch by seeing a lot of different examples and seeing the red threads and getting a feeling for it. It's not, as I said, important about the dates and if this is the so-called or this is so-called. It's more about uh, the structure and the strategy of this epoch that we want to focus on. Um, here we have a little chapel in Paderborn from 1017. If you imagine, it's over a thousand years old. And you see um, the very small, cute little windows up there. Also a very typical motive. Again, the round arcs. This time um, you can find that quite often with three little arcs and two columns holding um, in between. In all shapes and forms and sizes, you see that it's. Um, if you see something like this, it's mostly uh, Romanesque and you know, that's cute. They're very cute. They're like this. Um, and from the outside, it's... Yeah, it's, it's, it's okay, but the inside is very, very impressive. And of course, it's uh, renovated, which is sometimes a bit sad to get the feeling from back in the days. Um, it, it destroys it a bit with all this whiteness, the white walls, the wild wa walls and walls <clears throat> and everything. But I think you get a feeling for, for this um, kind of 
uh, room that is very interesting, I think, for for games, for also um, any kind of setting. It doesn't have to be a temple, a religious building or anything. You can use that for so many other things. And later I um, show you some examples that I found from Dragon Age Inquisition, where you have Romanesque buildings and um, motifs used to create this medieval fantasy world. Um, yeah, here it's very interesting with the columns um, that are highlighted, of course, because it just got freshly renovated and um, the very reduced uh, walls that are just, you know, they're, they're, they're there and they look awesome, but they're very reduced and back in, um, not that present when seeing it, but it's very interesting. Um, this is a time where you start having walls. This is also something to mention. In the beginning um, of uh, the, the, the the epochs after the antiquity, you don't have that many walls because no one knew how to build them anymore. This is a bit easy to say. Of course, you have um, exceptions from this. Uh, as always, you always have more exceptions than things have uh, sticking to the rule, but uh, walls were very difficult to build and uh, it started in the 10th, mostly in the 11th century that you have that again. And it changes a room if you have a flat ceiling or if you have a, um, I just checked what was with the word, a uh, barrel vault or if you have this very special wall that is more like a square and starting to look like what we understand as walls from the Gothic time with the ribs in it and everything. Um, so this is an interesting fact for, uh, I think, en environmental design, if you have a flat ceiling, an open ceiling, or if you have walls in it. And what kind of walls? They're, they're changing. They're, they give you a totally different feeling. Next time you go to an old church, check how, how the ceiling looks and what it uh, does to you. Um, and the same way, I think we can use that for games and game creation. Mm, a very, very Ger German <laughs> example, a very famous <laughs> example from Germany, uh, all makes sense, is the Abbey in Maria Lach uh, that was built more or less between 1100 and 1200. So it takes some time. And you see again the... the um, ground um, geometrical forms put together. You see so many little round arced windows um, now in, in the, the, uh, as, a, as a pair, not as a triple. Um, and uh, what you can see here very well is that the round arc is not only for windows. You use it for decorative elements, for giving a building here on the exterior, but also on the interior, a rhythm. You see it in the middle part. Ah, wait, we have, um, I can use my mouse because uh, in the old streaming software that didn't work. You see here these um, decorative round arc elements that um, are coming from the columns that I just talked about in the interior of the other church are holding it together. They're um, connecting here uh, the windows and structuring the wall. They're giving it a rhythm. You have this going on here from all sides. You have it going around the towers all on the same height, building a horizontal um, element, holding it together from all individual parts of the building. You don't have it here, sadly. Maybe there's a reason. Maybe it, it changed over the centuries. Maybe not. I'm not quite sure. Um, but also you see here very, very small little um, round arcs and here the three big ones, all decorative. Of course, they have no uh, structural uh, sense um, and doing nothing than being beautiful and giving it a rhythm. And rhythm is something in architecture that is very important because uh, not only from this decorative elements, but also walking through a room, a hall, a building. Um, it has a certain rhythm, especially when it's big and representational. And that's something sometimes what you want in your game to have the gigantic wow uh, rooms. Um, and uh, when your player and a uh, player character enters these rooms, like throne halls or temples or space stations or something. Um, and they are built by this stuff, not only the decorative stuff, but also the columns, the 
carrying elements, but um, these decorative elements give it a structure and a rhythm too and supporting this. That's um, something I wanted to show here and show you just um, um, one way of building in the Romanesque time. You see it changes and they have like different regions. Hildesheim is very far in the east of uh, now Germany. This is very far in the west. Um, they're, they're different. They're different buildings. They have different um, backgrounds and everything, but um, also many elements holding it together and sh showing, hey, we are more or less from the same time. Uh, here you can see the front entrance, and this is something very rare from the medieval times, that um, you have a little building in front of it, and the cool name is it's called a paradise, because you enter paradise when entering the church. And it's a little garden in it, and it has a little fountain uh, thingy with water in it. It's, um, it should um, give you it, um, it's a transfer station more or less because you're leaving the, the real world, the this side of reality world and going into another world in a different um, area in a different realm. And this should help you to, uh, during this transformation. Um, more or less. This sounds very abstract, but it's a cool way to um, prepare people and have it as like a border in, in maybe a game world from a district or from one area to the other and uh, slightly changing the uh, atmosphere and the feeling of a setting, for example. Um, I don't have a picture from the inside. Here we can see it a little bit. It's a... Um, uh, walking thingy around it and in the middle is a little garden and you see the uh, fountain in the middle a bit and um, it's it's really like a portal to another world and preparing you to enter this uh, different world which I really like and uh, this is also a good example it's not all architecture and the big parts but also the portals I like the word um, makes sense uh, are also an interesting fact and um, a special decorative element that gives your building um, a certain feeling. Like, of course, entrance doors are important because that's how you enter something. So why not making it cool? Not only with metal doors, but also, as you can see here, with this very nice decorated elements and arcs here. Um, this is more abstract with, it looks a bit like dragon skin or snake skin, I'm not quite sure, um, with the wavy thing in the middle and um, it cuts into the mural, into the wall deeper um, because it needs to carry off still the, 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 the weight of the rest of the building and um, it's a very interesting effect that you have with this carving into stone, even though it's blocks built on blocks and everything, but it seems like it was carved into the whole massive building. Um, I really love it. It's a, it's a smaller detail, but um, sometimes the details make the difference, I think. Mm, I wanted to show you the inside because the insides are very interesting for very certain atmosphere creations that you can have and the Romanesque atmosphere is of course something totally different and here you can see um, a not so uh, it's renovated and a bit too clean and everything but not so bright white like in Hildesheim what we just saw so it's a bit closer maybe to a certain feeling and um, the Romanesque architecture especially the representative architecture and the, the um, church buildings here, but not only, are on the outside very heavy, fortified, castle-like buildings uh, saying like, here I am, here I sit, I am a very big building, look at me. But on the inside, it's also like um, the same feeling like you're protected. It's like a cave, you see? It's very cozy, very warm. Of course, this is highly depending on the uh, photography because the light is so dim uh, because of the small windows that are having colored glass in front of it. So not no natural light is coming in and they didn't want natural, real from our world light in it because this is a different space. This is a different realm. This is where you see God and stuff. 
and uh, so it should protect you. It's it's very cozy somehow, I think. Um, but I like caves. I'm not an outdoor nature nature person, um, and it uh, gives you a certain feeling. And you can, I think, with this picture, uh, you feel the weight, don't you? I always feel it because you have these big walls. Um, you see the, the thickness of the walls through the arcs and everything. It's not like a gothic building that is light and filigrane and uh, looks like how can you stand for 500, 600 years. Um, and here you see the, 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 yeah, uh, the stone carrying everything. Yeah, yeah. It's a certain weight on you when you enter something like this, even though it's a gigantic church. But um, yeah, it's different. That's why these walls are so important uh, that you can see up in the in the middle part um, because they soften it a bit. I think they're they're giving you a cozy feeling of being yeah protected. I think somehow that's a bit um, subjective interpretation. But um, when you compare it to other buildings from later epochs or, or earlier epochs, this is a this this cave feeling, cozy feeling. Um, is something different, but you feel the weight. Mm. And of course, something that I saw in so many games, uh, crypts like this. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you, you all have seen something like this, not totally like this, but um, the narrowness, the weight that you can feel. This is, of course, under the main church. Um, the, the, that's why the columns are lower and the ceiling is lower, everything is lower because it's a crypt, makes sense. Um, and you see again the, this, this cubic, uh, cubical uh, capitals that I talked about um, carrying the, the big um, round arcs and everything. And uh, it could be a dungeon or a side quest for, for a video game where you can find something in a tomb or so on. Um, I played, what did I play lately? Hogwarts Legacy, where you had a lot of um, treasure uh, vaults in, in uh, underground and they all had elements like this, more or less, uh, with the same columns holding it, uh, having chambers um, decorated with round arcs and telling you this is an ancient ancient uh, place and so on. So it's it's a common thing to use this elements and this feeling and atmosphere from medieval architecture uh, for for certain creation of atmosphere in video games. Um, besides talking about gigantic, very famous big buildings, I wanted to show you a very cute little village church uh, from the Romanesque time to show that, of course, this is possible too. And how did they look? Um, they have also very bulky, very closed. No connection to the outer world. Looks like a little castle. Um, this is a very small city close to Stendal. Um, a village, not a city. And I just wanted to show you how this would have looked. And it's more or less for all from this time. And it looks like it had a little baby carrying it uh, in the back. And I found it kind of cute. But you see the round arcs, the small windows, the closeness, the, the, the massive walls. This uh, thingy in the west part, a big tower building, is something that is a very famous motive of the Romanesque time um, that you can also have in very big, for example, here in Havelberg. Um, it a, shows a cert, uh, that it belongs to a certain region. These things you find more in the north and east parts of Europe than in the west and south parts, for example. So with elements like this, this gigantic west buildings in um, Romanesque churches, you can tell like, ah, I'm in a different region. I'm. This is something special. This is, no, it's part of this um, epoch, but it is also uh, a regional um, specialty, for example. And it looks like a gigantic... I don't know. It's very impressive. It looks like like the church is pushing everything in front of it or something. I don't know. Um, I always loved them and find them very curious and no idea why they were built. But it, it, it's a big wall. It's really big. Um, just to, to give you more examples of how to variate one style for your game. 
um, because variation makes it, I think, very um, the, the environmental design way more interesting and deep than only using one element all over again. And with this kind of stuff, you can have the, this kind of uh, variation without totally having uh, opposite things in it or something. Um, because here you can still see the closeness, the small windows, you have the round arcs up there where the belts were, I think. I don't know. I, I'm not so familiar with this kind of stuff. Um, but you see, you can t see the, the main motives and elements, but still in a totally different form and shape. Mm, that, of course, not only Germany has uh, Romanesque buildings. You, I want to show you something from France here, the Basilica of saint Cernan uh, in Toulouse, which is a very impressive building of the Romanesque time, especially because of this super cute tower. I love this tower. I didn't know this church that well. And while preparing and researching for the stream today, I was like, wow, this is so awesome. And this is so perfect for video games, having stuff like this. Um, and you see, still, you can see the same elements I was talking about, the same aspects of the buildings. It's very narrow, very bulky, very um, yeah, bound to earth. You feel it, it, it's... It, the, the, the strength it needs not to collapsing under the weight of its stones, maybe. Um, the round uh, uh, windows again. You see a different form because it's a totally different region, but still the same structural elements and the same feeling. Look and feel. I like that. Look and feel. Uh, but the tower is very impressive. Mm. Also from another side, here we see the bottom, no, the behind of it. <laughs> And with a tower over it, uh, for this I also have an example later from a movie. Um, sometimes it's a bit difficult because I, I you know, playing, I, I try to play a lot, of course, but uh, it takes more time than watching a movie. So sometimes it's easier to show a movie uh, example, but they function the same way. That's why I think it's totally okay to use that. Um, yeah. Uh, and again, totally different, but same. Same but different. Uh, that's what I wanted to show with this example that, of course, they're not always the same, but they're following the same principles. Also here, you have the round arcs again. You have this decorative elements holding it together, a different um, approach this time with the little round thingies, chapels coming out of it. It's But still the additive principle can be seen. Um, and the same from the interior. Again, uh, different building, different uh, interior, but also the same. The rhythm you can see, you can feel the weight again, the, the gigantic amount of walls that are painted. Um, of course, uh, here you can still see a bit of the leftovers. I'm not quite sure they're from that time, but it, you can think that it at least um, back in the days, in the good old days, of course, nothing was stone sighted but painted at least with little stars like you can see here in the world um, or other elements um, and no church ever showed their stones. It would be a naked naked building and that is nothing we want. Um, but again, also here, the two round um, uh, uh, thingies, columns and hold it, hold, hold it? No held together oh. um, with this one big round arc. So again, this rhythm that I was talking about, it's, it's almost like a poetic of a building, for me at least, as an architectural uh, art historian with an architectural focus. Um, but you see, it is, of course, a structure that was planned, of course. You have the very big round arc here. You have the smaller two ones here dividing it. And then they are divided again by two smaller ones. This geom uh, geometry is, of course, intended um, and giving the room a certain structure, a certain feeling. And yeah, here you have the barrel uh, vault that I was looking for as a, as a word. In German, it's Tonnengewölbe um, because it looks like a barrel. So it makes sense. We are not that creative as art historians with the words sometimes. Um, very descriptive. And um, as you can see, it, it, it's a different kind of interior and a feeling. Again, even though it is big, it's high, it 
is very it's it's not like ah it's a little living room it's still a gigantic church but um yeah the feeling is different we will see that when we look at um other epochs then it, it's maybe a bit more clear what i mean that uh it's totally different interior so that's why we are cutting this and putting this on youtube and spotify so you can watch it and say like ah that's what he meant i i have a five-year plan uh yeah, here a nice image I found uh, that gives you, a, it's not 360 degrees, but an overview. Um, what I also meant with the rhythm, of course, uh, architecture, especially church architecture, has a certain rhythm with the columns, with the walls, with the connection points between the walls, elements from left to right. Um, and this is, that's why I chose it, because I like symmetry. <laughs> it's a bit too much, maybe, but of course, when you walk through it, you feel this. And um, it's very impressive. Uh, da, 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 da. And again, you see the, the, the closeness, the walls, the small windows, not much um, uh, light coming from the outside, more coming from the, the chandeliers hanging there, uh, candles and everything. As I said, it's not intended to have this bright and shiny from gigantic windows. Uh, Something I was thinking about lately a lot is um, paintings. How can be paintings uh, a good source for inspiration and reference material for video game uh, creators? And I found this from the, this church. It's a painting from 1845 and showing you also a bit the context, of course, of the middle of the 19th century of the church. It's not the original context, but it's also different. It, it, um gives you a different feeling and atmosphere of the building than nowadays and taking a photography. And as video games are so unique in the artistic approach because it is uh, partially painted, it's partially concept art that, uh, or based on concept art that is painted like a painting, um, then it's turned into 3D sometimes and you walk through it, you interact with it, but you see it on a display that is 2D, uh, so it's a digital painting. Um, it's a very interesting, uh, unique thing to, to see it and I think we can draw a lot of inspiration from oil paintings. Well, not only oil, but from paintings, because they are very um, close to concept art and can give you a certain look and feel for um, a scenery or a video game area or whatever um, in the future. That's why I, I, I liked it. And it shows the very cute tower. I like that tower. I'm a big fan of that tower now. I want to be his friend. Um, Okay, we're going further with another example, from this time from Italy, to show you another country, so we are not stuck in one. And uh, Italy was, of course, with the uh, antiquity leftovers all over the country, a bit different. But again, here you see still the same, what I said before, the little uh, two-arc uh, windows or openings, and here they have this climax triangle thingy which um, was at other churches more decorative around here you have it 3d um, built into the, the uh, facade of the church but it looks very cool and again of course round arcs oops, um, and columns in it but you know same motive different approach very cool and you can see uh, i hope you can see it the decorative elements um, here with the little figures and reliefs uh, in the in the facade um, telling a story too and giving it a certain structure first with the first glance I was like oh it got very destroyed oh it needs it needs renovation but then I saw like ah no that's that's art that's cool um, and uh, yeah what I, what I just said <laughs> uh, have a little detail of this kind of um, sculptural art at a building that follows a certain decorative element when you remember the illumination we saw in the beginning um, this is the same kind of decoration the fear of, of uh, emptiness in a surface is here uh, covered with decorative and figurative elements with a bishop with a snake with a pegasus with I don't know things and uh, they're very beautiful but also as very 
different than what we are used to see, I think. Uh, what we are used to have seen in our world, in our time. Uh, I don't know. Um, just again, a f look in a different interior, this time from this Italian church. Um, again, I, I don't want to repeat myself with all the same. Um, you know, you see it's different architectural elements, but it's still following the same structure and uh, with the same elements and you still feel the weight and the, the, the caviness of everything and the small windows. Um, yeah. Mm, of course, uh, we <clears throat> saw now very uh, representative buildings. Here is an abbey in Fontenay, which uh, was a very, very famous architecture. It's one of the most famous buildings, uh, at least in the art historical world, uh, because it was built for um, as a cloister from... Um, uh, a Catholic or order that was very strict with everything. They didn't like decoration. They didn't like anything um, taking your attention away from the world. So this is a very, yeah, um, strict uh, um, approach on architecture, but shows how your beliefs, your, your ideology uh, in a neutral way meant um, can also be shown in a building. And this is something that I um, try to do with my streams, with my workshops, with the tours I'm doing for connecting art history with, with the gaming world. Um, that building tells a story, of course, and that it shows the political, social, religious, personal beliefs and um, other aspects in a way. And that people understand that maybe not on a... On a um, ah, this is, I know this, but more like, ah, yeah, I feel it subconsciously at least. And um, it's a very uh, uh, interesting approach, I think, for, for environmental design to use this, what we've seen over the centuries in the world. Uh, Fontenay here, the facade, you see very stripped off. This is um, one of the few buildings, Romanesque buildings, that are really, really, really um, conserved, more or less, from this time, which is cool. And here you see the only decorative elements are these two columns up here from the bigger window. The rest, nothing. We have no idea how it really looked, but you don't see any sculptures, any other elements. Of course, the portal here stripped from all decorative elements. It's just a carving step by step into the wall and two columns again. So not totally giving up on anything, but um, a very reduced uh, version of this. And it has this very interesting um, um, uh, impact, I think, uh, especially seeing the other more worldly decorated uh, things. Uh, here, the outside, just to, to give you a feeling of the length and the uh, size. It's always good to have little humans in your picture because then you understand what the dimensions are. Also something I highly recommend doing for video games uh, because we as a viewer here now um, put us, our experience, and connect it with this image. This lady will be, I don't know, 170, 180 uh, doesn't matter, but then we understand the sizes of the, the um, columns here, for example, more or less. Give, uh, it gives us a feeling for, for size. <clears throat> um, also, the interior now, of course, it looks very stripped, very cold, very empty. Uh, but um, I think you get also, again, a feeling of the interior uh, from the other buildings. Uh, especially with the very big walls, the very hardly seen uh, windows. Of course, the back is now very illuminated because of the camera, but um, the rhythm of the room, the, the steps it will take walking through it um, are very good to see here with the uh, different arcs and um, the, the connection points here from one side to the other and the rhythm of the column um, pillars and everything. It's a very impressive building. Mm. Okay. I, I think the 30 minutes are way over. 
Okay. Uh, I have to learn that. Um, we, we are taking this as a learning that this is maybe something. Um, it's, it's difficult to break that down in, in 20 or 30 minutes, especially to show more variations. I think seeing variations is very important uh, to understand it. I could have chosen three buildings, but maybe um, this is... I, I don't think it's very um, helpful then, but we will see and learn <laughs> a bit over the time. Okay, uh, the Cathedral of Mainz. We are getting close to the end, more or less. Um, the Cathedral of Mainz I show because it is the biggest remaining Romanesque building in the world. And I know it quite well because I studied in Mainz and it is a very impressive building. And also, if you have seen during the last uh, examples that, of course, also the materials changed because that's a regional thing and a money thing. But also it gives you a different... Uh, kind of feeling of the building like do you have bricks do you use uh, blocks made of this kind of stone or like here in mines um, they used uh, big blocks of a red stone that was very common in that area and used for this um, gives it a different feeling connects it with all the buildings at uh, the river mine um, close to the river Rhine, uh, because this is where this um, stone was coming from and was transported via uh, the, the two uh, rivers, because they are heavy and you're not carrying this in your backpack, hopefully. Um, so there are certain buildings from this time and later too that are connected because they're using the same um, sort of stone that is coming from the same source and same area. So you know they are from one area, for example. This is also very interesting to use, I think, as a smaller detail in a world creation uh, in video games um, to show certain areas and where something belongs to or a building belongs to or a character NPC belongs to because he lives or builds something like that and puts themselves in a line with a certain region or lord or whatever. Um, and again, you know, this is a very, 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 very important uh, representational building in the 11th century because it was, the after Rome, the biggest uh, bishopship, diocese, diocese is the English word, uh, in the world after Rome and um, really important. So they showed that. And you see the different elements with the round arcs, building this really cute gallery here, the bigger arcs, uh, holding this together. And um, still, again, little windows, small windows, and a gigantic massiveness that is impressive, especially when you see it here from this from the sky, from the heavens. Uh, because then you see the modern buildings around it and the Gothic uh, addings and everything. And uh, the, the modern city of mines around it. So you know the size more or less of this gigantic cathedral because you can see here this is people sitting in a coffee. It's a very nice coffee I can recommend. And this is the ground floor. It's an old building. So it's a high ground floor. First floor, second floor something and then a big thingy and then this is only touching the basis of the cathedral for example so it's really big um and massive 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 uh here the oldest part of the church of course that grew and changed and the towers are from other times and additions later and it's difficult after a thousand years but again the very cute rhythm of the round arcs and the columns here with the bulky uh, cubic shaped um, elements. I just showed it and repeated again to show that it is um, a main feature of this um, architectural epoch. And again, the interior, very dark, very uh, heavy laying on you, even though this is a gigantic room. Uh, again, old ladies as um, for scale. Uh, so you can see the size of the, the middle part of this uh, church and there left and right, smaller, uh, lower parts added to this. This is just the middle part. Um, it's always good to have an old lady for scale with you, I guess. Uh, I hope you understand what I mean. And again, here the windows, it looks very bright because there for one time the sun hit it 
totally and the photography is not the best, but it's a bit showing too much light. This is not how it normally looks like. It's more like a dark cave and you enter this and be in a different realm, which is a super interesting feeling walking through it and um, getting the impression of the building that is intended. This is all intended. Of course. Uh, and again, here in the, you can see inside the inside of one of the towers. And again, here the decorative elements holding it together, um, structuring it, and uh, giving you the Romanesque feeling. And again, just to show it, a crypt, because a crypt is always nice. And it looks like in the back, it glows a bit that you can get a legendary artifact that you can pick up and have to fight the archbishop as the arch enemy or something. Uh, gives you a very uh, dungeon-y, gamey feeling, I think. Mm. I wanted to show you just the Cathedral of Speyer because it is a imperial building by the emperors back in the days. Also, just to show you the same, what I repeat, said before, um, in, with another example, it is also a gigantic building and you have here the very, very cute uh, gallery with the round arcs, always the same, and another interior to give you this feeling of stoniness and weight. Again, it's a very famous building and um, even, I don't know if the interior is bigger than the Cathedral of Mainz that we just saw, they're more or less the same time, Speyer is a bit later. But um, again, you see and feel the rhythm um, of the, the uh, architecture, especially because you have on one column the, the smaller half columns um, and then the bigger ones holding the walls up here. And um, it is difficult to talk about this with images. It is something you have to experience to really understand what I mean um, so the next time you walk into a church or a building like this, doesn't have to be a church, um, pay attention to what these elements do with you and how this rhythm of the building is interacting with you and changes the way you walk, the way you behave. And I think this is something we can use for video games. And um, yeah, it's it's very interesting. Um Okay, so we are not only looking at churches. I wanted to show you um, a very cute uh, imperial, a very cute imperial palace. Um, the imperial palace of Goslar, which was back in the days the biggest not church building um, of medieval times, uh, at least in Germany. And again, what I just said with the round arcs this time we have the three ones again the little uh, the middle one is a little bit higher and then this is connected like a package you can buy three get it bounded i don't know um buy two get one free and um, with the bigger arcs here hold it together you see it is always the same element and then in a smaller version on top of it to give it more structure and everything um it's a very cool building and uh, just to show you, of course, it doesn't always have to be a church, even though we can learn a lot from them and just use it for cool imperial palaces. I like it. I, I, I had to, to Google that word again, because in German it is um, Kaiserpfalz, and I had no idea what the official English term would be. And it was imperial palace. So, okay. Um Let's go, just another example, what I meant also with the material, the, um, something is built. Here we are again in uh, Italy. Italy has a lot of marble, way more than uh, Germany or France, so they used it. Because why not? If you have it, use it. And uh, the Cathedral of Pisa is one of the most famous buildings for this, with this famous facade. Also Romanesque, and what I said, round little arcs, building a gallery, put it on top, uh, repeating it, structuring everything, giving it a rhythm, um, and uh, breaking a little bit the, the horizontaliness of this building. and But still... You know, same but different and unique. Uh, here the facade again, just to show you that the Italians, of course, with the uh, antiquity leftovers everywhere, were a bit more closer to this than uh, the, the 
uh, Romanesque architecture back then. And yeah, just uh, you see, it looks a bit like mines with this part here. Of course, different, but same um, as it is with everything. And just um, to give you a feeling for the interior and that the very small windows are not there for lighting and and brighten uh, the room here uh photography showing how it really really looks like inside a build like this it's dark it's cozy and calm and everything um yeah and here you have uh, old lady uh, for scale again i can only highly recommend it to see how big these columns are <clears throat> okay um, and in the end, something I said before with the portals that are very interesting to use for uh, structuring a building to highlighting an entrance, giving it a certain feeling of the time and um, making it a highlight of your building. This is something just to show you from more or less around 1100, uh, three different portals from the uh, three different areas and aspects, but all Romanesque and I think quite impressive and uh, very useful for fantasy buildings, especially fantasy games. That's why I would say let's jump to applications just to show you that this, what I just said, is of course something you can use, you can draw inspiration from, and that it is used and uh, in different aspects. Um, that this is not just something a poor little art historian makes up in his mind because... He wants to. Um, I have found some in, um, examples from movies. For example, the famous Lord of the Rings movies, as you remember, maybe from around 2000. And you have the uh, Hall of the King in Minas Tirith on top of this white city, all made of Italian marble. Or at least it looks like it uh, has the... the uh, round arcs, it uses all the structural elements that we just saw here in Pisa. Not not totally the same, but it is drawn, uh, the inspiration is drawn from Romanesque Italian architecture uh, from that time. That's why I wanted to show you this for set design. I think it's also CGI. And um, if you remember, I don't have a good picture. Uh, here, the portal, it totally looks like a portal like this here in uh, San Salvador, for example. Just to show you that this is highly used to create certain atmospheres and connections in our perception in a, uh, in, a, in a film here, for example, but you can also use it in a game. Here, what I said from uh, Dragon Age is the game. Uh, to show this, it's of course you don't have to copy and be historically correct, but you can draw the, the um, inspiration from it or get a gist from this and use their uh, building structures for your game here. It is, I think, very close to Romanesque architecture with the big pillars, with the round arcs. They have very interesting solution here. Um, but the, 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 the closeness, the caviness, the darkness uh, from the... A little amount of windows gives it a very Romanesque feeling. Also in the back, if you have seen it around arcs where the colored glasses are in, um, goes back into this Romanesque uh, period. Here in a different, uh, same building, but a different perspective, just to show you that they are really, really drawing the atmosphere creation from Romanesque architecture, in my opinion. Mm. Also, you can see it here a bit with um, concept art that they're playing around with it. Here, I would say it's a bit different. It's not totally Romanesque, but um, with concept art, you can at least play around and get create atmospheres and very epic things that you can then build in your video game. Um, <clears throat> Uh, another example, of course, is The Witcher here also for Blood and Wine, a bit of concept art where you can see this church built uh, around a graveyard and the concept art here shows totally that they used the structure of the Romanesque um, architecture with the round thingies added to it, this additive principle with the round arcs, with a little gallery here. This is 
uh, totally something we have seen on so many churches today. Ah, so many churches. Um, and even the tower. Of course, it doesn't look like the French tower that I wanted to be friends with, but um, the idea is taken from it. And also the decorative elements here again. So it's a very interesting approach to draw, take this, this um, uh, historical things and turn it into your... Um, your game, your asset, your concept art, your setting that you want because they have a certain look and feel that can highly influence your game uh, in a certain way, in a certain setting, in a certain time um, and gives it a certain feeling. If I say certain again, I will hit myself. Um, the last example is from a, this time from a movie again from the World of Warcraft movie and uh, I mean the Cathedral of Light that you can see here. That was my first connection to the French church that I talked uh, before. Wait, I can jump back just so you see. It is not the same. It is totally different. Um, but you see the connection that is taken here uh, or built here to the Romanist um, architecture. It's just in a gigantic fantasy-like tower but the the um, arcs here they are not totally round they look a bit more gothic but um the the structural elements having these three arcs connected to the next level with this columns here it's a bit difficult to see because it's a, from a distance having these smaller decorative archy thingies whatever it is it's difficult you see what i mean it's just, they, they they took this idea from it and build their own impressive fantasy medieval um, thing. So uh, that was the application part. I hope it was, it makes sense in, in all of our heads. And this would be the end. Yeah, with, with the 20 to 30 minutes, that didn't work. I understand that now. <laughs> and, uh, that is interesting. I don't know what to do with this fact. And we will see. Uh, I could have taken out at least three examples, but I think we would have lost some insights and oversights. Oversights? Overlooks? Um, from For this time. So maybe my concept with 20 to 30 minutes is a bit too much, but more uh let's say 40 to 50 minutes and we will see uh yeah that was the application part and that was the part about the romanesque epoch especially architecture with the most important quintessence how this architecture works how it looks what the motives are what you can draw from for your game projects i hope um, you like that and i would say let's start with the q and <music>